In this video, we're going to talk about trees. So a graph T is called a tree if T is connected and has no cycles. So basically what this means is that all our vertices are connected by edges and there is no possibility of having a loop in the graph. So we specifically denote T instead of G to denote trees. So if I use T, I'm talking about a tree. If I use G, I'm probably talking about any graph. So that is the definition of a tree. If you have a graph that is not completely connected, but still abides by not having any cycles, then we call it a forest, because essentially this graph here is just two trees. And anything more than one tree is a forest. Of course, maybe not in real life, but in the mathematical world, it is a forest. So what are some cool properties of trees? Well, if we have two vertices in a tree, then there's going to be a unique path connecting them. So I'll draw a very basic tree here. Um, we'll do a binary tree. So a binary tree always splits into two. So we'll do uh, one more layer on some of these. Okay, and then one more here. And we'll pick a, path, a vertex A down here, and we'll pick a random vertex B, and we're saying that there's exactly one path to get from A to B. So remember, a path is a sequence of vertices such that none of them repeat. So we can see here that we go up, 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 down, and down, and then we're there. And there's no other way we can get there. You're saying, well, what's the proof? Well, if we suppose there's not, so suppose there are two paths. So we have A goes somewhere to B, and then we have A goes somewhere to B. But in here, there's either one vertex or two vertices that are different. So we can say this goes to some sequence X and this goes to some sequence Y. Well, what that means is that there has to be some loop somewhere because we can either only go up or down a tree and we can never revisit. So what this says is that there'd have to be a loop and therefore we have a contradiction with the definition. They, you could write a more detailed proof, but this is one of those properties that is really, I'd say, obvious and on an exam, I don't think they'd ever make you prove this. So that is that question. Uh, the intuition is there. So let's move on to something that you probably would have to prove on an exam. And that is the property that in every tree, the number of edges is equal to the number of vertices minus one. So let's do some intuition first again. If I have three nodes in a tree. There's no loops and they all have to be connected. So I can connect it like this and like this. Two edges, three vertices. So three minus one is two, it holds. So to prove this, we'll do an induction on edges. So here we go, the base case, E is equal to zero. So there's no edges, what does that mean? That means that there is one vertex so this is the tree. That is our tree for zero edges. Now we can see here that zero is equal to the number of vertices minus one, which is just one minus one. So the base case holds. For induction, we're going to assume that E is going to be greater than or equal to one. Of course, I use this little E to denote the number of edges. So we're saying that there's at least one edge here. So, we know that there's at least one vertex. So we can say there's at least one vertex V in our tree. So what we'll do is we'll define this new tree, we'll call this T prime, should get rid of that stick there, and it's going to be the graph T minus some vertex that we pick. So let's say before that we had a tree like this. Well, what we're doing now is we're saying 
Okay, let's just remove this vertex here so we have this. Okay. So now we have a smaller tree, and what do we know about this smaller tree? We know that the edges in this tree are going to be equal to the edges in the original tree minus one because we removed one vertex so one edge is going to come with it and the number of vertices is going to be well the number of vertices in the original tree minus one okay so what does this mean well if we take e prime now we get v prime minus one because well, the induction hypothesis says that E is equal to V minus 1. So when we substitute in E prime, we get E prime plus 1 is equal to V prime plus 1 minus 1. So we get E prime plus 1 is equal to V prime. So E prime is equal to V prime minus 1. So these are the steps we take at this point from the induction hypothesis. So we have proven that if we have any tree with E edges, we get V minus one edges. So when we plug back in our original equation, we get E is equal to V minus one. So that is a proof of the cool properties of edges and vertices in trees. So let's do a question related around this property. We have two graphs, T1 and T2, and we're given the knowledge that the number of edges in one is 17, and the number of vertices in graph two is two times the number of vertices in graph one. So what is V1? Well, remember our properties, E is equal to V minus one. So E1 is 17. So E1 is equal to 17. This means that V1 has to be equal to 18 because it's the number of edges plus one. So V1 is equal to 18. V2 is two times V1. So that's gonna be two times 18, which is 36. And E2 is equal to the number of vertices in graph two minus one. So E2 must be 35. So there we go. So V2, two times V1, 18 times two is 36. And of course E2 is going to be V2 minus one. So that's 36 minus one, which is 35. So that's how I got that answer. That's cool. So let's go to the very last thing here. Is it possible to have a graph with this property? That is the number of vertices is equal to the number of edges plus one it's the same thing as saying E is equal to V minus one. I just rearranged it. But to have this graph where G is not a tree, so is this possible? Well, let's say we have three vertices. So we have three vertices, which means how many edges do we need? We need two edges. So we need to draw this so that G is not a tree. Well, this is actually pretty straightforward because what we could do is we could just not connect it. So that's clearly not a tree. There are other ways to do this. Well, of course there are. We can do this and we can do this. So that's not going to be a tree. So this example is here to show you that just because we have the number of vertices is equal to the number of edges plus one doesn't mean you're looking at a tree you could be looking at a disconnected graph. So that's always possible. Of course, if we have this, this is gonna be a tree. So those are the basic properties of trees. Next time we're going to take a look at rooted trees and tree directories and tree traversals. So that'll cover stuff you'd see more in a computer science-based discrete math course. So that'll be one video. And following that, we'll get into some algorithms for finding minimal paths. So if you enjoyed the video, please share it and I will see you guys next time.